All right. We are going to go live now <laughs> for the second time. Oh, there we are. We're live now. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, Sorry, we're a few minutes late. We have been, um, Amy and I here, my guest Amy and I have been talking here for uh, about 10 minutes. <laughs> to ourselves, you thinking, know. Yeah, rehearsal. Thinking that we were live. <laughs> and now we are actually live. So Amy, give me a little shout. Let me see if I can hear you. All right. How am I? We good? We're good. Can you hear me now? Yep. Good. I can hear you. Okay. All right. And are you hearing an echo at all? Nope. Not the, nothing. Nope. You're not hearing an echo. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Let me just, yep. I can hear you. All right, perfect. Hang on one second here. Let me just fix something here. All right. Hang on. Little couple little glitches here tonight. So let me fix. That's just because it's me. I just have this magnetic <laughs> thing that just blows up anything. Um, oh <laughs> my! Okay, I <laughs> see some connect. of our, I see yeah. some of our friends here. Hi yeah. Arnell. Hi Birdie. Hi Josie. Thank you all for um for being patient. So I'm gonna go ahead and and say exactly what I said before, only probably totally different. <laughs> But uh, welcome everyone to the Let's Go So Live show where sewing enthusiasts gather to learn more about their machines and get inspired. So hopefully we'll be inspiring you tonight. And I have a great guest with me. I have Amy Bachman from Harmony PA. And Amy and I have known each other for quite a few years. We've had the um, wonderful opportunity to work together at some different educational events. Um, Amy and I probably met for the first time at the brother dealership convention because Amy is a brother dealer. So bring yeah. your brother questions with you tonight. And um, Amy is the owner of Amy Bachman's Sew and Quilt Shop. Did I say the title of the shop the right way, Amy? You said it correctly. It couldn't be any more boring than that. <laughs> That's all right. It tells a story. It tells exactly what your shop is, is all about. And so um, I know you've got um, some, some great things to show us tonight. We're going to talk, we're going to talk sewing for about an hour here and um, share with some of our friends. And we do welcome your questions. So again, um, this is the Let's Go Sew live show. And I do this on the fourth Monday of every month. I invite a guest, someone in the, in the sewing world to join me, someone that I believe that you will um, learn from and, um, and enjoy hearing talk about sewing too. So please remember to subscribe to my channel and sign up for notifications. That way, each and every time I do go live, you will know all about it. Yes, and I, the bell. Ring the bell. Absolutely. Please do that. But I'm so thrilled to have all of you here tonight. John Morgan's with us tonight. Hey, John. Hi, John. He is a mutual beloved friend of ours. Yes. And um, Josie is here. And so let me know, everybody, if you can hear okay, because I'm seeing um, somebody said, did the sound cut? But um, if anybody else cannot hear, please let me know so that we can uh, try to fix that. That'll be, that'll be glitch number two for the night. Hopefully, hopefully we won't have another one, but I just checking the battery on my microphone, make sure I'm good. All right. So Amy, I'm yes. just, like I said, I'm just really happy to spend some time with you. Uh, Amy and I have worked together at some, at various uh, events, some educational events, and, and we've you know, had the chance to meet a lot of different sewing enthusiasts and, um, and teach, <laughs> teach together. And I, I have always admired you, Amy, and the way that you're able to communicate with um, students and participants when we have, you know, an event somewhere. Um, you know, so many times I think people get into an event and they're really excited, but because there's a lot going on at one time, um, people yeah. can get lost, right? Have you seen that yeah. happen at, at some events? The energy is high in the room and then 50 different conversations break out 
and what you want to know you can't hear because everything else is going on so yeah it's uh you got to kind of break it down and keep everybody hoarded together so uh, you, you are absolutely correct but you know I, one of the things i love about you is that you have that way of making everybody you know feel at home and feel calm oh, and really you. helping them understand you know what what the steps are what the project is is involved and uh one of the things I, I remember most about um, some of the events that we've worked at is how you have been able to get everybody to give their show and tell. <laughs> and that's always one of the best parts when people will get up and, and you know, bring things with them and show them off and, um, you know, projects that they're working on. Sometimes sometimes they're half done. Sometimes they're all all the way done. But that's always a fun part of I know. Of and we, it's, it's just inspiration, right? And the best part is, is you don't, you're not sitting there thinking everybody in the room is our experts and they do all this amazing stuff. And I just make little things with my machine, but what Definitely. we all do is important. And I think being inspired by what other people do is important. And you always learn something, you know, from you, somebody yeah. who does it a different way. So it's, it's a great, you I love drag and brag as I call it. Yeah, that's right. And that was the term. And I knew there was a certain term that you used and I couldn't, couldn't quite remember, couldn't quite remember what it was. Well, you know, I love to find out about everybody's own personal sewing story when I have somebody as a guest on this show. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to zero right, right in on that from the very beginning. And I right. ask you what, you know, tell us your sewing story. Like, how did you learn to sew? Where did you learn to sew? Who taught you to sew? Who influenced you in sewing? How did your whole sewing life start? Yeah, it's kind of a, a strange uh, progression, actually. So I grew up in pretty much a non-sewing household. So there was nothing. And my Barbies were Kleenexes. They were old T-shirts. They were anything that was, you know, laying around. And of course, I grew up, I, I lived with my maternal grandparents. And of course, they were extremely frugal. So like it, it went from a T-shirt to a rag to a car wash or something. And by the time I got it, it was pretty rough shape. <laughs> To make ah. something out of so again it was just hand needle and thread and I made my first hand project in Girl Scouts like so many and um I'm much older than YouTube so there was no place to go learn um how to do anything so my grandmother knew enough about sewing but um we didn't have a lot growing up and my father's nickname was Fred for Fred Sanford <laughs> And um, he was an artisanal plaster and he worked in these amazing wealthy homes around um, the Pittsburgh area and where I grew up and whatever they were throwing out, my father brought home, which included sewing machines. So I asked one time, you know, to sew, I get a sewing machine while well, it came and it pieces and my grandfather was a mechanic. So we took it apart. We put it back together. We made it work. And um, that's what started it. Just because I felt it was like a weird thing. I just wanted to do it. And I didn't know why I wanted to do it. So my mom didn't. sew. my Nana sewed just a little bit and my father would buy me any fabric I wanted from back in the day. It was Minnesota fabrics um, or piece goods. Right. Yeah. But he wouldn't buy me the clothes. And at that time we went, we dressed to go to school. I mean, we wore jeans on Friday and that was it. Right? The rest of it was dressed. And I was a have not in a school of haves. And so my girlfriends had, at that time, it was Bobby Brooks suits and, you know, little Pendleton jackets. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so my neighbors, this sounds like a sob story, but it's really not. I had a great childhood. So let's, let's start with that. Um, we had this little block house in the middle of no man's land. And they started building these monster expensive houses around where my parents lived and my mother grew up. And so the, the house across the street, the lady's housekeeper sewed. So when, you know, and I was the neighborhood pest because I was the only girl and I went door to door and visited with everybody. <laughs> and so she kind of took me under her wing and I learned some things and um, sewing machines progressed as my father found junk ones <laughs> and flea market ones. And wow. that's how it started. So I started with this blue, I'll never forget it, poly crepe skirt. And that was my first project. And by the time I got to home act in middle school, I was already really sewing. Wow. And my teacher was so annoyed with the fact that we were to make this vest and it was supposed to last six weeks. <laughs> so you're really self-taught then pretty, pretty much, much, right? Pretty much. I, wow. if I had a question. I found someone. And in 1976, 
I went to the Sears School of Sewing. Okay. I went to the Sears School of Sewing too. Oh, I know. So <laughs> it poor, was wonderful. So that poor lady, I'd asked to go to the mall and I'd run upstairs to Sears to see if she was working. You know, she was in, in the fabric department at that time. Yeah. You know, and she would help me and the lady at Minnesota Fabrics would help me. So I think that's where I knew I loved what I did. And I realized at that age, how wonderful it is that somebody helped me. Yeah. I think that kind of started the foundation of, you know, you buy a sewing machine from us or you buy a pad or something from us that we're here to help you. Like it's like, don't feel lost. Um, I think a lot of times we just chuck things in the corner because we, you know, give up on it or something. But, you know, I think most local stores are willing to help because that's what we're there for. Yeah. So. But, but really, and truly, you know, a shop like yours and, a, and, and being a dealer and being the owner of a shop, you know, you, you know, it, you know, it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to be all things to all people. Right, exactly. But I've always said that, you know, find a good dealer and, and be their best friend because I bring them cookies, you know, whatever. <laughs> cookies but, rate huge <laughs> here, especially with the repair you know, guys. If, if you have a dealership, you know, in your area and you can bond with them, you know, you're, you're, you're going to form a relationship that is going to be helpful on, on both ends. Right. I sure. agree. It's, and it's so valuable really to have a good dealer in, in, in the area. So, right. Yeah, I agree. Um, tell us a little bit about like what all your store actually has on the inside, you know, what, so we have a little mental 20, tour, about 2,500 bolts of cotton fabrics, right. A little bit of everybody. We don't do Moda. Um, and there's, I mean, there's quite a few brands we don't do, but we do a lot of under the jab text family and uh, other things. So primarily we're sewing machine dealers. I mean, that's my first focus as far as uh, things go. It's like the nuts and bolts of, of the exactly. store, the heart of the store. Threads and notions. We have a nice threads assortment from all different types of threads and uh, like serger threads and specialty threads that are kind of hard to find just at you know, a regular um, chain store. So we try to carry things that are a little bit different but then we have everything for the brand you have. Do you know what I mean? That's so important to have everything branded and available for the consumer. That's important. Yeah. So different, you have different machine brands there, obviously, yes. right? Yes, we do Genome and Bernina. And, um, but my heart is in that dang brother scan and cut. I just have uh -huh. to tell you the scan and cut and then my luminaire or my personal machines. I just say it out loud. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so... Ton, like classes are now ramping up, right? So we did used to do tons of classes. Now they're coming back. And, um, you know, the, the, I guess the big thing is we just function how the store functions. We try to do creative patterns or something simple to inspire everybody. Um, you know, so when you walk in, there's something to go, oh, wow, that looks good. But we try to keep everything kind of easy. So anybody who walks through the door, whether, especially if they're a beginner, which we're seeing a lot of since COVID, a lot of like, oh, I bought a sewing machine. Now what? So we yeah, have to absolutely. make sure there's some entry level projects and, um, well, I know, I know, um, you know, the, as far as like, um, machines, I'd love to see how many of my, our friends here tonight have, and I see so many of you, I, I'm sorry, I missed a lot of your names at the beginning because my, I wasn't, uh, wasn't getting the chat there really quick, but I see, I can see you now. So I see we've got Josie Sos is here and Paula and Vicki and Janet and, and Cheryl, and I'm sure you've got lots of friends and fans here too, Amy. But um, when it comes to machines, you know what? What do you? What do you? How do you handle it when somebody comes in and they they know they want something new, but they really don't know what's out there? You know, um, I'll just tell you real quick. When I worked in a sewing shop, I used to tell people, you know, this is a little like going to the Humane Society. Like, you need to tell me a little bit about, you know your family, your, you know, your, how do you have a big yard? You know, I need to help you um, find the right thing without you having to look and, and hold and hug every dog and cat in here. If I know a little bit about your background, then I can zero in. And I hope that, you know, uh, that that helped people, but I'm sure you do something similar. Find out what kind of sewing somebody likes to do and yeah, then that's kind of, guide them, right? But the questions I usually ask, what kind of sewing do you do? What do you hate about the machine you have? And what do you love about the machine you have? Yeah. So those are the kind of things. And like, what's your goal? What do you want to do? What do you want to grow into? And that usually that kind of opens up the conversation. So I kind of 
know where they're at. And, um, you know, there's sewing machines from $200 to $20,000, you know, depending yeah. on where, where you want to go. And a lot of it, especially since um, people inherit older machines or they haven't bought a machine in 30 years. So when they come in the door, they're like, first they have sticker shock, right? It's like, oh, you know, a sticker shock. But when you think about it, if you bought a good European machine back in the day, you could have paid 20 years ago, $2,500 for it. And so now that yeah. machine's now $4,000. So once we get past the sticker shock, it's all good. And yeah, but that's, um, that's kind of nuts and bolts. We just want to know what's important to you sewing wise. And then we try to steer you from there. And that's why lessons are so important too. I know you give, you give lessons to everyone that buys a machine at your shop, no matter what level they're yeah. purchasing. Yeah. Um, you get unlimited lessons. So sometimes we see somebody once and it's something silly. Sometimes people schedule every week. And a lot of times they'll like five years later, I'll call them like, Hey, I never got my lesson. I'm stuck. You're what? Come on in. We're good. <laughs> And, you know, I was kind of wondering, like, and I didn't, didn't think to ask you this um, when we were talking earlier, do you sell trade-ins at your store too? We, like We do. We take pre-owned machines. Yep. We take trade-ins and then we sell pre-owned or pre-loved as we call them. Yep. And then we totally refurbish them. And um, they're few and far between now just because our sewing machine inventory is so sad <laughs> with what's available and what's processing and what's coming in. We're just selling everything we can get our hands on. So. Yeah. Yeah. They're in high, high demand for sure with yep. everything that's um, going on. In, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, we've got lots of, I, I know you have some friends here that I can see some of them in the, in the chat. So I should have probably said at the beginning, we're going to take questions. I'm going to ask if you could kind of hold most of them till um, we're, you know, we get towards the end here because it's a little easier for me to, to keep track of my cat's yeah. trying to get in on this whole on this whole interview tonight oh, right now. So I, she may pop her head up here. She gets okay. far enough up into the camera. I don't know. She usually likes to crawl on my neck right about oh this gosh. time. <laughs> but her tail is blocking the chat right now. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so, all right. So you did all that kind of early sewing. It sounds to me like you had some, some kind of mechanical experience at the beginning too by... Yeah. Um, and I think that's what makes it in. so easy now is I can pretty much fix them or, you know, diagnose them anyway. The newer ones are so much more complicated, of course, yeah. because, you know, your first $99 Kenmore ha, was not a whole lot to it. So yeah. that's kind of where we're at. Well, what would be your personal favorite kind of sewing to do? Hmm. On the sewing side of it, I, I enjoy doing sewing smaller embroidery things now. Be- yeah, I do smaller things now, right? I do a lot of applique. I do a lot of embroidery. Um, I I don't have a whole lot of time. That's the sad part because I started doing this because I love this and I still love this. But for me to sit down and make an entire huge quilt or make garments, which is where my heart is, I would love to go back to garment sewing. Uh It's just... Yeah, hard, time. Right? Yeah, time. exactly. And you know, it, it's interesting because I think um, you know that it in a, you know we've talked about this in a few times on on the show, and I've talked about this in other places. But a lot of people struggle with that. Struggle with actually getting something from start to completely, you know, done. <laughs> you know, done finished. But I think I've kind of learned along along the way, and I encourage people it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to have, uh, what do we call it? UFOs, unfinished objects. Um, because if you enjoyed the process and you learned something while you were doing it, and maybe you changed your mind and you don't want to fish it. Now, if you do, obviously you're going to want to try to make time to do that, but you know, it's, there's a lot to be said just for the experience of doing something or learning something or playing with something and not having the pressure to actually have it all completely finished at the end. So yes, my life is 12 inch square plastic project boxes <laughs> that kind of get stacked in the corner. And a lot of it is like um, new machine features. Like I have to figure this out or um, I'm doing a class. I have to get my demo set up. I tell people I sell a mean six inches anymore. <laughs> it just seems like, you know, that's kind of what I have time to do. I have some things that I've made, but and I have a list of a million things I want to make. But a lot of times it's just 
working around the classes and the online stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. And well, that's a fun part of the fun thing about educating though, too, and doing classes is you get, you get an excuse to actually, you know, make something and then you right. have a deadline to actually get it, get it done. That's true. <laughs> it all has to be done by a certain time. So speaking of classes, um, yeah. tell us a little bit about some of the classes that you have going on in your store. I'm sure we've got, like I said, I know we've got people here that, uh, that are our friends and fans of yours. I see my buddy Donald is here and um, Brenda, I didn't see Brenda here before and uh, Star Raymond is here. So glad to have all you folks here tonight. So keep chatting with each other and, and, and have some fun sewing talk there while we're having some fun sewing talk here too, but chime in and, and comment on some of the things that we're talking about. Um, classes, tell us what kind of classes you have going on there. So, um the amazing talented people that work for me have some great classes like Margie has in Borby club next week. And then Nancy's doing a scan and cut class and some of them are virtual and some of them aren't just depending on the intensity, but like in September, we're having a four day surgery retreat. Um, we have a nice lady coming that does surgeries to do a retreat. Um, we have uh, Oklahoma embroidery design doing hands-on in October event wise. That's a two day hands-on event. And um, there's just a lot of, um, like I said, the class schedule's still in a pile. It's on a calendar. I'm hoping, hoping to get it done pretty quick. Um, there's different quilt classes. I know Missy's going to be doing um, a Halloween quilt. It's going to take time. So you'll be done by next Halloween. <laughs> and uh, a couple other fun things. And gosh, know, my mind just went blank. Um, well, while your mind is blank I'll just tell you it looks like uh Ed has joined I think he has the same last oh. name as you so he must be somebody you know and he says Grammy's here too so hi Grammy oh hi mama <laughs> hi Ed <laughs> nice to have you with us tonight I know that's sure. awesome yeah that's my husband and of course Grammy is my mom so that's awesome so you got your fall schedule that you're kind of right in the, in the midst of in the uh, midst of, together. because, you know, just as soon as I ramp things up and then they talk about, Oh, this new variant and then people pull back and educators don't really want to travel, start to travel. So, yeah. you know, we're just trying to make do with what, what I call busy classes, you know, we're doing bowls and table runners and just fun demos come watch things. Um, you know, because it's harder and harder to lug those big machines around um, for classes. So that's kind well, of. And that's one of the great things about about virtual, too. I'd love to see in the chat, you know, how many of you are enjoying, you know, some virtual classes that you're able to able to take online and how many of you are getting back to wherever you would normally go to take uh, hands on classes. I'd love to right. see some some comments here. But and I'll you know, say as a retailer just please, if you want to put your mask on, just go in and say hi to your local sewing machine shop or quilt shop. You know, we've had a, a long 18 months and uh, seeing people, I mean, I'm a people person and I'm a hugger. Me too. So, man, when that Me mandate too. went down, I was like, what do, what do you do with somebody who just hugs everybody? And how, you know, it was awful for me. I have like, stepped oh. out of out of that spot where you were supposed to stay in so many times I can't even count. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm attending a conference in September and on the name badges, it's red, yellow or green. Stay, keep your distance. Um, one is fist bumps and high fives and the other one is hugs. And so depending on what level of contact you want, it's so creepy because if you're an extrovert like myself, man, I, I was psychologically messed up, not hugging everybody. I hear you. I hear you. I, I some of the people that are here, you know, are on my, on my email list. I send out an email every, every weekend. And during, you know, that whole time, it was, it was great just to be connecting even, even that way. But, um, you know, but some I'll of say us one thing, I think it's the sewers that kind of saved the world. And I have felt that way since Betsy Ross picked up her first needle whether it was a war effort, whether it was this virus effort, this community is the first one to turn on their machines, put their heads down, get busy and try to make the world a better place. I could not agree more. I, I think we ought to have a sewing stamp like yesterday, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and um, definitely um, the things that, that sewers do um, out of Hopefully. their, from their heart. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, every day, you know, you've got uh, um, 
quilts of quilts of honor. I'm, I'm not quilts saying of that valor, the right way. Right? Quilts of valor, quilts of valor, and then countless, countless charity um, sewing events that right. are taking place probably every minute of every day <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Some um, of those great people meet here. So it's so nice to let them have a place where they can get together and they're doing stockings for soldiers and quilts for youth yeah. homes. And when there's a hurricane or it just goes on and on. So yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. It's nice of you to have a a place there that you can open up and, and, you know, have people come in and do that. Yeah. It's no so, good if you don't share it. And sewing is all about sharing, yeah. isn't it? For sure. I don't think I got the picture though, quite of how you went from learning to sew and sewing and going to the Sears school <laughs> to having your own shop. So tell us the story behind that. How did that. So happen? it was a little weird in one way because, um, my husband was a paramedic forever. Like we're talking Gage and DeSoto days back in Squad 51, right? And so he had lost his job and then I went to work. I really wasn't working as a stay-at-home mom. And so I went to the House of Fabrics in the Singer department, right? So let's just put that in perspective. And I really enjoyed the job, but they had so many restrictions. You had to use yellow thread. The customers couldn't touch the machine. You couldn't do a class. You couldn't do this. And I'm like, I was losing my mind. And people were coming in all the time and I loved helping them and that kind of thing. Fast forward, my husband started his own ambulance business. So he went off to do that. And then I kind of quit to join him. And okay. then we had a house fire. So wow. the living room was empty. So people from Singer were finding me via the phone phone book. That's how long ago this was, 1990, 91, I think. And um, started teaching in that empty living room. Wow. And then I, my first phone, people said, well, where are you getting your things? Where are you getting your things? And at that time I was getting them from Nancy Zeman. She had just okay. um, opened her store. So I thought I'm gonna take all the guts I can get. I'm going to call her. So I called Nancy Zeman and she was so sweet on the phone oh my. and she was just starting her wholesale business. So I started ordering through her. And then of course, stretch and sew was big back then. Yeah. And um, then that's how I met Mary Malari and Nancy Zeman and uh, even Eileen Roche from Dime, how we all became friends 30 some, well, no, 20 some years ago, because wow. all we had were the sewing shows. We didn't have Facebook and all of a sudden we had to connect either via a real telephone yeah. or meeting in person. Yeah. And so um, they were, they were all three very instrumental in helping me grow and suggestions and my first time selling sewing machines was at the local county fair, which is called the Big Knob Fair, right? Okay. So here, just put it in perspective. I'm in beautiful Beaver County, Pennsylvania. And um, I was in a tent. I had three machines on a table and it rained. And I rolled my pants up. I was up to six oh. inches of rain with stuff plugged in. <laughs> so bad it was and I was in tears and it was raining and I'm like this is stupid I've made a mistake and I felt bad because taking that kind of money at the time out of the family was huge mm. and so and I'll never forget her to this day her name was Emmeline came up to me and she said I cannot wait to tell the sewing guild there's finally a sewing machine store in Beaver County and from that minute on it was like a game of telephone and boom it just that's how we grew just by wow. word of mouth and um, that's how I just, I really knew nothing about nothing when I started. So especially about business, I was 26 when I started. So, wow. So you grew, it, it grew up with you and you grew up with it in, in pretty some much, ways. Pretty much. Wow. That is really something, really something. Well, I, I'm just, I want to get back to kind of talk about classes a little bit. I think you maybe brought some samples with you to show tonight, huh? Yeah, just really more show and tell than maybe a class sample. Okay. So I'll just show you a couple quick things. Okay, that um, would be great. I know we all like to see what everybody else makes. And so I... this is a project called Mix and Match Quilting. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. And so this was done on the scan and cut. This is traditional applique. There's no embroidery here. So when you cut this flower out, you take the negative, you move the flower somewhere else, and then you take the centers and you scramble them around and you scramble oh, the frames around. My. What a so neat idea. Use them on. And then you just use your decorative stitches, right? It's a good time to use those decorative stitches. And then we just press the seam open and 
decorative stitch before it was just simple quilted, right? Wow. So let's mix and match quilting in the skein and cut. Well, I'd love to hear from um, our friends here in the chat, whether they, um, number one, have a scan and cut, if they're a scan and cut wannabe -er. yeah. <laughs> and if they use their decorative stitches, those are all some questions that I would ask everybody that's here. Arnell loves your quilt. Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah. This is one project that's available on amysews.com. It is a, you can get the download for the scan and cut and the class itself. Um, it's one of the and few things that are hanging up in there. And I do want everybody to know, um, we'll definitely get um, all of Amy's contact information. Uh, I will post it in the, uh, in the more section uh, to the video once the video uh, is uploaded for a recording. So you will absolutely be able to find Amy and connect with her. So no worries on that. And let's see, oh, my friend Sharon made these, but I thought I'd share them because it's embroidery. These are, get that out of the way. These are, embroidered on cards oh how fun from oesd <gasps> but she colored them with um inks with the uh ooh, they just lost my mind with the not crayon you can do them with crayons too but they're that sukaneko inks maybe i don't yeah, know yeah yeah i know what you mean it, they're but, especially made to go on like paper right yes so look how cute i mean just like it's a quick and easy you know you just finish the inside I don't know if you've been to a card shop lately and they're like five, six dollars for a card. I'd rather put the five, six dollars in the, in the envelope. Well, you know, <laughs> I've been making card. cards. I've been making cards for years. I love making cards. I have some right. of my own little special methods, but um, th the cards that I end up giving, I end up seeing like five years later, they're still on the mantle or something because nobody ever wants to get rid of them. So I know I, I, love, a, I love it when people give me personal cards. I do hang yeah. on to them because it's, it's a lot. Um, the other thing, I mean, I think we all love Irene from Embroidery Garden, right? You can't help it. So I love her. I just made this and her little Sunny's um, zipper oh, case. I know glasses. that's one of Reen's newest designs. It is so cute. Reen, Reen Wilcoxon from embroiderygarden.com. She was my yes. first, first guest on this show. So yes. And it's, um, it's super easy, but we have these purse vinyls in the store. Oh, and so nice. they really stitch up nice. And then that's actual leather. Really? I, I love leather. So look, I did this leather in design center. Got to hold up so you can see. Wow. But that's actual hide. That is gorgeous. Which is a thin layer of batting. Okay. So when people say like, I don't know if I could do that on my machine. Yes. Your brother will definitely embroider heavyweight fabrics like this. So, and look, wow. that micro stipple kills me. I just oh, that is that so is beautiful. Like, and that's all well and good, except um, it takes a lot more time. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> But at least you, you could be doing something else while it's doing that. So that's yeah, done on the Brother Luminaire. Yep. Brother with Luminaire. The, um, uh, design the Center. Design Center right. feature. Um, and of course, you have other machines that have that feature as well. Like, uh, so it doesn't XJ, even, XE. Stellaire. Stellaire, Dream Machine. Dream Machine. Yeah. Got that in there. Yep. And then this is just inexpensive. Inexpensive vinyl with a layer of batting. So uh -huh. um, they call it vegan leather. Yes. This old ladies call it Naga hide. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. That. You're right. So you carry that in your <laughs> okay. shop as well. Yep, we do. We do. And, and I, Amy, do, do, before somebody asks, because I, I would wonder this, do you do mail order on those types of things? We can. Sure. Um, okay. Like, my website's iffy at best. We're loading things up to it, but you can always call the store. I don't know if you could read my phone number, but I put it behind me. No, I did. I, no, I didn't either. But yes, you can just contact me and call me. Okay. We can go ahead. Why don't you give your phone number right now while we're thinking about All it? All right. It's 724-779-1390. Maybe we could have Ed type it in since he's over there. Okay. That would be great. That would be good. And gone. then um, Laura Lee um, is asking, do you use a special needle when you're stitching on that? on that leather? Um, the answer is no. It probably was a 90 universal, but we don't use leather needles. Leather needles are, have this, they're not really for most leather sewing, I should say that. Yeah, That's they're not for embroidery line. for sure. They're yeah, definitely absolutely. not for embroidery, yeah. Absolutely. Although we have done, in coming up, we're doing a class on wing needle embroidery, embroidering with a wing needle, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, that's definitely a specialty item. But I know it it you know needles are another whole 
whole subject, but a lot of people do kind of um, get a little confused because there isn't that much crossover from sewing needles into the embroidery world. Embroidery. Most of the time in embroidery, we use an embroidery needle. Most of the time we use a size 7511 right. because the needle is entering the fabric so many times that you don't want a needle that's poking a very big hole. Now there's some exceptions to that rule, but right. generally you, for my embroidery and I, I, you know me, I embroider a lot. Everything. Yeah. I have rarely gone over a size 12. I might use a size 12 top stitch needle um, on occasion when I'm doing a woven fabric and I want a, a you know, a sharper, sharper, cleaner cut. I'm, but. I'm really kind of, um, kind of addicted. I will say to the new dime needles that dime released a whole set of embroidery needles with different eyes, different tips, but mostly in that 75 category because the needle to hook clearance. So when this is where your bobbin case is and your needle comes down, there's only so much distance that can be between that. And, and the thicker your needle, the thicker your needle, the more it deflects that needle off that bobbin case. So exactly. when people come exactly. in with a nail, I'm like, well, your machine's not calibrated for a, a hundred needle. You don't need that for anything. So, yeah. you know, that's, I think it's a, and that's an education issue. And even the manual is very sketchy with embroidery needles. So, but 75s is calibrated for 75 11s. And that really is another area where you need to trust your, your dealer, you yeah. know, because, you know, you're given the information there that you would give your, your, you know, your people that would be coming in and purchasing machines from you. And they, right. And the last thing we want is you to ruin something. Absolutely. Never, absolutely. Never good. You want smooth sewing and smooth sailing all the way. Yes. And I apologize sure. if you guys hear background noise. There's a, a guild meeting on the other side of the Well, room. that's okay. Oh, you get somebody in there sewing and having, and having fun, right? Yeah, they're doing <laughs> a good thing. And Alice is here. Hi, Alice. I see you popped in here. Very good. And my friend Donald, he has a 10 needle and he loves Ooh. it. You know, maybe we could um, like hold that for a future show and you could talk, talk all about your um, multi-needle. Oh my gosh. They are too. just so lovely. And I don't know, um, I don't know if Brenda popped on or not, but she just finished the OESD, the new one with the flag and everything. And, um, and you got to have a multi-needle for that. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> just the way it goes. It, you have all those color changes um, in that. Definitely, definitely saves you time for sure. For sure. I like working on both of them, actually, you know, um, sometimes simultaneously, but I, I have a, um, I have a, a six needle machine um, that I use and, uh, you know, and then I have the, the brother uh, Luminaire and, you know, sometimes I, I, I just kind of, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I like that, that slower pace that you get with threading it one at a time. But then there are obviously are times when you have a need for speed. <laughs> and you I get agree. Some, sometimes I like, <laughs> I enjoy the process and that's what I love my luminaire for. But sometimes if you're making 50 freestanding lace bookmarks, well, if I got a machine for you, just exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, the main thing is whatever you have, make the most of it, right? Whatever yep. you have, absolutely make the most of, make the most of it. And you don't have to have super fancy to make amazing things. You know, you are so right on that. I know um, you would speak to this, you know, very much so with the machines that, again, we'll just talk about the machines in the brother world that they have come out with in recent years that used to be, uh, you know, features that you would have to buy the top of the line for that now we have on, you know, almost entry level machines, certainly not very much higher above entry level. And then obviously you pay more as you go up in, in hoop size, but you know, the potential is there even with moderately priced machines to get editing features and options that would have at one time cost you. Um, yeah. Definitely. I, I have customers who have machines that maybe you're in that five, $600 range that do, do the most amazing quilt work, piece work, everything gets done in that machine. And it's, it's beautiful. And I, yeah. I love the fact that there's something for everybody. And I have to say I'm spoiled because I can run from every corner of the store and sew on what I want. And uh, yeah, it's um, we, we, we want to instill in everybody that you don't have to spend a ton of money to make something amazing or enjoy what you do. Exactly. I guess I've always, you know, kind of encouraged people that, you know, go with, go with what your, with your budget is, but if you can stretch just a little bit higher, just a little bit, and not necessarily, I'm not even talking necessarily money-wise, but 
as far as, you know, what, what the options are and even like your skill level, it's always good to have something that you're going to grow into rather than buy less. Cause you're like, Oh, I don't think I really need this. You know, once you get going, <laughs> sometimes it's nice to, you know, have something to grow up into a little bit. So I, I agree. You should have, you know, I, I never want you to spend more because now with financing, you can finance something for 72 months and, you know, but six years later, are you still doing that? You know, that's, that's the big question. Yeah, for sure. Um, society has a multi-needle embroidery machine that she loves, but her real love is still her sewing machine. And she has real and sewing in capital letters. So I think she, I think she means that with her, with her whole heart. And again, that, you know, that's the beauty of sewing today that right. no matter what you want to do, like some people, you know, they're, they're interested in machine embroidery. Some people aren't. I always like to, you know, leave the door open a little bit. If you think you're a little bit interested, then you may want to look into a combo machine, a combination machine that sews and embroiders because down the road, then you've got, you've got the, the potential, but then there are some people that like to have a separate machine for everything, a dedicated machine. Right. So again, it's, it's different, uh, different stitches for, um, for everybody and what everybody wants to do. But, you know, we were talking a little bit about machines and, you know, your samples and all that. I wondered, like, do you have some favorite tools that you, you know, like, like that you couldn't live without? What, what would be some of your favorite all time tools that you use for whatever type of, of sewing or demonstrating that you'd like to do? Got some ideas on that? So since pizza isn't a favorite tool. <laughs> So, so I think that, that's so tough. Some things I use all the time, magnetic pin cushion, right? Can't live without my magnetic push cushion. And I love these blue magic pins. It's kind of hard to even see them. They have that heat oh, resistant end on them. I've heard a and lot about those. Flat. I don't have and any. They're almost self-destruct. Well, not self-destruct. They're hard to destruct, destruct destroy them. That's the word. Okay. Um, yeah. So they iron beautifully. They do beautifully. And I guess good scissors, you know, like really good scissors. You can't beat good snips, but I, I'm not, you know, maybe that I shouldn't true. say this out loud. I'm not a huge gadget user. Okay. Like I have my good basics and I'm content. A good marking pencil, good seam ripper, good scissor. You know I mean? It's just really. Yeah. I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I'm, I like, I like to test things and I like to try all the different things are out that are out there because obviously if I, if you hit on it, cause you never know, you might hit on something and you go right. like, like those pins. I haven't tried those pins yet, but I've heard a lot of people rave about them. And if you, you know, if you try something like that and you go like, wow, I didn't know what I was missing. Now you have a new found favorite tool that you're going to use over and over again. But right. But when it comes to sewing machine feet, you got to have them all. Oh, absolutely. I, have, I we can... love my sewing machine feet. I love funky feet, feet that do things. That's, that's my jam is right there as feet. Yeah. You and I are on the same, same exact wavelength on that for sure. Um, if, you know, I, I'm a big believer in having those accessories available because right. what's going to happen then. And obviously if you learn, learn about them, you know, I do the uh, I do a accessory of the month project for brother on the brother stitching social um, blog dot is, is where you'll find those published, but I do that once a month and it used to be just feet. I would just pick a foot of the month. We used to call it. Now we call it accessory spotlights so right. that I can do different things. But I think once you learn how to use those accessories and what they're, what they were designed for, I think that, right. I think that's one of the most interesting parts is what really, what was the what were the mechanics behind the design? Um, once you then you have them in your repertoire, somewhere down the road, you're going to be trying to do something and you're going to say, oh, wait a minute, there's a foot for that or there's an accessory for that. And if you've right. got it available, you can dig it out. So I, I can't think of the exact name for the for the foot, but the um, is it the double full bias foot, the, the bias tape foot, you know, that you run the bias tape through yes it's clear with the foot i can never remember the name the ad it. adjustable bias binder foot is all it's called i think i think that's what it is yeah. i love that foot for projects and i will tell you this is a weird project and everybody laughed at me when i made it so everybody knows someone that has an expensive handbag ah. right? okay 
So I took a shower curtain and I bound the edges and put some Velcro here. So if you are a city girl and you get on the bus or, you know, you have to run in the rain or you're late, you know, can't get to your office. I made a raincoat and I used the pocket of the shower curtain for, um, you know, my cell phone. Yes. Everybody oh laughed at me, except my computer's not wet. My iPad's oh. not wet. Nothing's wet. And um, I love it. I love it. I know. So I love, you know, I do a lot of dumb things. <laughs> you know, what dumb a sewing. Great... But anyhow, I, and I enjoy doing stuff like that. But I love that foot for that reason. Like if, before I ruffle something, I love to run bias tape on the edge of my fabric and then ruffle it. Yeah, what a great idea though that is. That is really a good one. You got any other um, little samples there that you used any accessories on or, um, or that you want to tell us that are special? Accessories, so this is what I'm, a project I'm working on, right? So it's kind Everybody of loves work. your purse idea for oh, sure. In my purse <laughs> raincoat. Um, so these are little canvas wooden art frames. I got them uh -huh. at the dollar store, right? Okay. So we took them off the stretchers. Uh -huh. And I put it in a scan and cut and I cut oh it. Oh my. And it's going to go back on the stretcher, right? And I'm going so to you... do four sides and glue them together. And you can make like a little table lantern or oh. you know, just like a place to drop out one of those little battery candles or yes. you know, if you have a wedding or. Something. Yeah, or just to set the mood for, for dinner. At Christmas, that's beautiful. Yes. I'm very much a white Christmas person. I'm not a big fan of all the color. So okay. my Christmas is, as if my mother's still watching, it's drab. It's boring. White with a little bit of silver or gold A little speckles, bit of something. Maybe? Yeah, maybe a little gold or something in there. It's a little bit of silver. But anyhow, but I was thinking that you can get those art cams. It's really cheap. They come in huge sizes. You can cut up to a 12-inch square with your mat. So they would make great luminaries like out on your porch or. Absolutely. Like yeah, Absolutely. I'm always working on something different. Well, let's get back to just a little bit of chat right. about the scan and cut, yep. because I think you told me that you've got some plans in the future for um, opening up some instructions on the scan and cut. Oh, yeah. Is some of that still oh. secret? No. no. Okay. Uh, great. And I just talked about today. I'm like, I'm going to bust if I don't tell people. Right. All right. Let's hear it because I think this is, you know, for what we've got going here, obviously I've got people from all over. I don't see my friend from Australia here um, yet tonight, but if she's here and I missed it, um, but I know we have people from all over. And again, you know, one of the, one of the things that has happened to all of us is we've learned about zoom. We've learned about, you know, learning online and it's opened up a whole new world for, for a lot of us. And it's, it's enabled people to take classes in areas where, you know, they live where they don't have that, that kind of option. So right. I know you've already done something with sergers and you're going right. to do so, that again. So in the, the surger subscription box is still um, now we close the subscription because I just don't have enough source, any more stuff. So you get a box in the mail with the project stuff for the project we do the class so it's bi-monthly every other month okay and, and is that open with, currently or is that it, something there's that... a wait list so if you go okay, to com, just click on put your name and email and when it ready to relaunch we'll just send you the information we're doing the same thing with the scaling cut oh that is wonderful I, I told everybody at the beginning right i said amy is an educator extraordinaire and i meant that you know in oh, the fullest so sense of the kind. word because you're educating on so many different things. So yeah, tell us about the- going to be op the uh, um, awesome. It's going to, the wait list is up now. Just just if you want information, just leave your inf name and email and I'll get you information when we're ready. It's going to, first box will ship in October. And so it's class-based. So you're going to get the education. We do a live class with all of us. And then I do a recorded class. So if you don't like the clutter in the class to learn, there's a quiet class, as I call it. Okay. And we do email check-ins and Facebook tips and that kind of kind of thing. So um, yes, yeah, super. So sometimes I say always in my classes, it's not about the project, it's about the process. It's about so that little learning. zipper bag, you're thinking, well, Amy, that's stupid. I'm like, well, we put a zipper in with our surgery. We gathered, we rolled, hemmed, we used differential feed. We learned to turn perfect corners. So I really delve deep into the whys in the house. So if you struggle and, and with the surger box, people are like, Oh, now it makes sense. It clicked. No one ever took me there. Yeah. Like, you know, 
it's very empowering because if you're taking a class, just be, you know, and somebody's showing you just do this step and, and they're, you know, why? Well, just do it and then you'll be right. done and then you'll have something to take home. Yeah. But what did you learn and how do you apply that down the road? That's what's important, I think. Yeah. We just do a, a why you're doing it and a how to do it. It's not so much about this is what you're going to make in the end and woohoo, you're going to be amazing at it. If you can't do this, then you can't grow. You know what I mean? Like if you need to know the basics and then we go from there. So that's exactly what we're hoping to do the surgery again, which I am loving that format and the scan and cut, which is my heart. So I'm all happy. Well, you've been doing scan and cut from the very, very beginning. I think you were really one of the first people that was doing any kind of education with that machine. So, right. and we're um, going to open up to all scan and cuts. You don't have to have the newest and the baddest one. You know, you can have an entry level one, you can have the newest one. And I imagine brother B2B in a couple of weeks, who knows what we're going to see. So yeah, who knows? Yeah. Oh, well, that's neat. So they'll get, they'll, if they subscribe, um, obviously, well, why don't you go ahead and give your actual, um, website right now and spell it out. So that okay. everybody wants to jot it down and they don't want to wait for me to get it entered into the all right. So the, there's two places you can join the, the wait list. AmySews.com is the simplest. Oh, right? that's and easy. Then it's just a basic website where we host all our classes. So you visually won't see a ton of stuff going on there, but you can get in and get on the wait list. And then AmyBachman.com. It's B-A-U-G-H-M-A-N.com, AmyBachman.com. And you can hop on there. And then okay. of course we have Facebook and Instagram and like everybody else, I'm, I'm, I stink at Instagram. That's my goal this year <laughs> to be better at Instagram. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I'm just seeing who else is here in the chat. I've got um, Donna is here from um, nearby my own close, close to where I am. So hi, Donna. Glad to have you here tonight. And um, Lori is really happy because she has an older scan and cut. So yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, they all, they, there's always extra, what I like to call toots and whistles that are built in to different models, but essentially, and if you had to narrow it down to like, somebody asks you like scan and cut, what does that even mean? What generically, what, what does a scan and cut do for those of, uh, out here that maybe don't know? Right. So it's a magical little box <laughs> that you put a file into and it cuts uh, paper, it cuts canvas, it cuts fabric, it cuts balsa wood, it cuts puffy foam, it cuts all my embroidery designs for appliques. You just go to the brother machine, you turn it into an applique, you stuff it in your skin and cut and everything is cut for you. So it is a huge time saver. There's a little, a little bit of a learning curve. And, um, you know, and again, it's one of those things is once you get a grip of why you're doing something, then you're like, oh, light bulbs off. Yeah. And um, I cut just about anything I can stuff in it just to see if it happens. <laughs> so well, I know in mind for you <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, they obviously they've, they've made some changes with the, you know, with the cutting blades and right. things like that and the cutting mats, but they also have lots of, I mean, again, we're talking about another whole, whole subject, but things that you, you can draw with, you can color with, you can emboss with, you can create rhinestone templates you can create stencils but i think you're you know you're right when you narrow it down you know the heart of it is scanning and cutting which is obviously right. why they named it that way and that that can be either a file that you plug in or send even or wirelessly or create uh, you know with using the free program online that they have to coordinate with it but essentially you can also put something on the mat and scan it in and, cut and it then out. once the machine sees it, then it says, what do you want me to do with this? Do you want me to draw with this? Do you want me to cut it? Do you, you know, right. um, that's, I think what's, what's really, really yeah, neat. I had paper dolls. You can scan it in there and it cuts it out. Yeah. You want to cut out a sticker. It finds the outline and cuts it out. You pull a pattern out of a book, you scan it in, you cut it out. So it's, and then the website, the can, uh, canvas workspace is free. Brother, yeah, brother gave definitely. us something for free. Which definitely. It works either in the cloud or you can actually on your download PC a desktop or version. Or Mac. I'm a Mac. Yeah. Well, I, I use both, but um, Mac PC, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So. Yeah. I know one of the most fun things, and, I, and I'd love to hear anybody else here that has a scan and cut, um, what some of the most fun 
Is that a good way to say that? I don't know. What, what have been some of the most fun things that you have made or fun things that you have done? For me personally, I did a um, It's So Easy TV show segment where I used a design that was built into the scan and cut, drew it on a piece of paper, and then used the um, app in the machine to essentially scan in or import that image into my design center. And then I turned that drawn image into an embroidery design that I put on dress. So that's, show, you know, you can go from one way, you know, from the scan and cut to the machine or from the machine to the scan and cut. And there are a lot of different ways it can connect in between. So, yeah, if you have you know, any of the brother machines with design center, right. And the scan and cut you, you aren't limited to anything, right. Anything. Right. And so that, I think that's my favorite thing. I spend more time, I guess, tinkering and creating things than I do sewing them out. Right. Like I just did these coasters. These are a free thing on canvas, but we switched them up a little bit coasters. It's um, for a table runner. So um, they're, mm-hmm. The, I think those were Julie Faith and Balls. Or oh, how maybe. cute. Yeah. So they're meant to be cut out of paper, but I cut them out of a batik and white and we put them on felt. And then you just bar tack them together to make this kind of fun table runner. Oh. That's free on canvas. It, does, yeah. it doesn't cost you anything. And you just, and this crunchy felt, my gosh, if you have little people in your house, you can cut anything and everything for them to play with. It's yeah. Uh, Make, make little pretend food or <laughs> anything, anything else. Anything. That's what, you know what? I think looking back when we learned to sew, we had 10 stitches if we were grateful. And one of them was a buttonhole <laughs> if you were lucky. Yeah. And now these young girls have these crazy machines and YouTube and TikTok and WhatsApp. And it just goes on and on. And they build these communities where they can do things. I think that's why I'm really... I mean, I've been 30 years in this business going on 31. And when I see how the technology has changed, how fun it is now to just poof things create yeah. and be able to have contact with people like this. I, I love this yeah. work and just chat with anybody anywhere and teach them something great. I, I love to say um, I, one of these days I have to embroider a shirt with this on there. There's no business like so business, <laughs> you know, and, and sewing people are, are just always there's you have an immediate, immediate connection and, and friendship. For yep, sure. Absolutely. Um, yes. Like you, I could, you're a great friend, but we don't see each other a lot in person, but exactly. Chatting exactly. Like this and then, you know, virtual meetings and, you know, yep. Yeah. Like, oh, Amy's live. I got to see what she, I got to see where she's at today or what, what fabric she's showing, what she's talking about here and there. <laughs> and my rise and shines on Saturday morning. I know those are good. Well, you, you know, your, your background behind you is very beautiful. Thank you. Um, and it makes me kind of want to ask you just a, a few more questions before we, sure. before we wrap up tonight. And then obviously if you have any questions out there in the chat, please get them in here so we can, we can ask Amy before she has to scoot tonight, but um, everything looks perfectly perfect behind you. (laughs) I'm going to ask you, do you have any uh, suggestions, tips for organizing and making your sewing space, whatever that is a happy place? So I have a lot of cabinetry. I can't spin that cabinet. So I have a lot of cabinetry and, um, I think Darius makes these 12 by 12, four inch clear project boxes. I think they're four or five bucks. Everything that I go to do is in there. The okay. thread, the fabric, the pattern, things I've cut out, notes for myself. And if I don't get to it, they just stack nicely. I can pull it out anytime. But that's where how my zippers are sorted in this tall cabinet. Everything is in a bin with a name on it, zippers, thread, okay. bindings, kind of weird stuff. And I cannot work in clutter. So I'm one of those, yeah, odd people that my sewing friend, they just toss everything. Well, we're all different for sure, yes, obviously. Yeah. So <laughs> when I start a new project, everything gets cleaned up. Everything gets put in the drawers, scissors, rulers, okay. Okay. everything gets put away. And then I get out my next project. So it's a little, yeah, a little over the top. Maybe That's okay. You know, I was uh, reading a book recently. I won't, I won't give you the title or anything now because I don't remember exactly, but it's basically... Um, um, defines what somebody's organizing style is. Like some people like everything 
where they can see it. They might still want to put away, you know, yeah. but they, they like it where they can see it. Other people like everything closed up, you know, behind closed doors. And then there's, there's all those different ones in between, but um, I guess I'm, I kind of fall into the, like, I like seeing it all, you know, cause if I put it away, then I don't remember. Where I well, that's very it, true. When you bury something, you're like, you pull out six years later and go, what, when did I do this? When did yeah, I why did I clean that? that? I why really I knew where away? it was before. <laughs> That's it. I'm not a fabric stash okay. person because it's never right when I want to go make something. So I'm pretty boring, I guess, when it comes to what's around. Well, you, you've always got the option to go shop in your store, though. That's too. true. So I'm pretty yeah. close to anything I want. <laughs> let's be honest. So that works out. That works out pretty good. So what um, if I was going to ask you, like, what what you what kind of project are you most excited about right now? Maybe that maybe that we've already answered that with talking about the scan and cut. And I, I what think you're gonna do there, I think that's but. it. I think that's planning out of, ye- uh, you know, a year of excitement. They're bi monthly. So you're not jammed every month of the project They come every other month. But I think the pro I like the process of this is what I want to do. And then how do I get here? And what do I teach in between? I'll make something five or six times. I talk to myself, like people are here listening. And um, yeah, I just like that process. And I get yeah. so excited when people post their finished projects. I think I, I love planning the education. I love the education. And that's why I'm in this business. It really wasn't about um, selling tons of sewing machines. And that was going to be my goal. The end goal is teaching you and hopefully you'll want a new machine yeah. in the end, but it's all about education for me. Yeah. You're, you're, you're sharing the love of sewing. That's yeah, what you're exactly doing. You're sharing the is. love of sewing. Absolutely. So I love to sew. You love to sew. Everyone that's here tonight loves to sew. What might you be doing if you're not sewing? Do you have some other hobbies? I know you're a, a wife, a mom, a doting grandmother. Grandma. Um, yeah. I know you got a lot going on. Um, now your, your son actually works in the business with you, right? Yep. And your Zach husband? Run, too, Zach so. runs the repair department and um, he's slowly working his way out to run the store because I'm hoping in about five years, I can take a little bit of a break. Um, Ed takes care of all the hard things. Um, I don't do well with money, numbers, <laughs> paying attention. I've, I would screw up anybody's bank account in a heartbeat. So <laughs> That's what Ed does. And he does help in the repair department. And he, he does all the back end, the membership work for the, the, uh, the subscription boxes and the okay. classes. So he's got a lot got on a his great, hands. He's got a great and support system. If there. I had a dream day off, first, there's nothing like sitting on a beach, but that's unrealistic in Pittsburgh most days. So I think I love to bake and I love to cook. Uh-huh. And um, I enjoy that. And to me, that's just calming. And, um, it just kind of takes me away from this. The business never goes away. And if you're a creative brain, it never turns off. Yeah. You're yeah. shopping in some store and you're like, Oh, I could make that, you know, or I could show people how to do that. Or that's really cute, but I, I'd rather do it this way. So it never turns off. Um, so baking is just another left turn to being creative, I think. Yeah. I, and I've seen some of your cakes and they're very creative, oh, and very, very beautiful. I love it when you post post pictures of those, but it makes me really wish I could have a taste <laughs> for sure. Well, I see everybody here tonight is, is commenting how much they've enjoyed it. And um, I know we've got a lot of creative, creative friends out there, but um, Jen, it, a- Amy, it's just been just a really, really fun evening spending time with you and, and talking, talking sewing. And, um, just hopefully we've inspired some people out there to, um, go sew something and, (laughs) and have some fun and, and, you know, just do something really, really beautiful with their, with their machine. So thank thank you you for going. You're awesome. Thank you for being here. We'll see you again soon. I hope. All right. Bye.